Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com, your libertarian car guy. Um, I'm going to do a quick walk around of the 2017 Mini Cooper. This is my backup walk around video. Um, I had taken one with a new GoPro. Uh, unfortunately, I can't figure out how to get the GoPro to uh, work with my Mac. So for now, I'm back to uh, the low rent uh, Contour Roam fisheye camera. Anyway, here we are, the 2017 uh, Mini Cooper hatchback. It is pretty much the same this year as it was last year. They have um, decontented it, though, slightly. Uh, decontented is a term they use in the industry, meaning what it sounds like. They pulled something out, make you pay extra for it. And that's the, um, the adjustable drive mode um, that they used to offer as standard equipment in this car. And, and there's a little toggle on the, uh, the shifter console, which I'll show you. Um, and you would rotate it to the left to get uh, sport and let's motor, a more aggressive kind of driving experience, and then um, over to the right to minimalize, um, which is kind of Mini's term for, um, for their eco mode, which um, dials back throttle response and shift points for maximum economy. Anyhow, um, other than that and a new 7 special edition package for 2017, um, the uh, 17 is mostly a carryover. Pretty much the same now um, as it's been for several years. Uh, the major change occurred about two years ago when they made it a, bit, a little bit less mini than it used to be. Um, they increased the overall length uh, by about half a foot. I think, uh, if memory serves, it was about 5.3 inches. But they did a really good job of not making the car look like it had grown. In fact, unless you park this next to the original Mini, uh, it's very hard to notice the additional um, 5.3 inches. And it's still very tiny uh, relative to other cars out on the market. Um, which makes this thing uh, very easy to uh, maneuver in close quarters, a lot of fun to maneuver in close quarters. You can kind of frogger it around. You remember the frogger game from back in the 80s? Uh, you can zip around um, in traffic, which came in handy, by the way. Uh, I posted a picture I took um, while driving the Mini the other day of some guy in a circa late 1980s Chevy Cavalier that had a full-sized motorcycle hanging out of the trunk of the thing. Um, so I was able to get up close, snap a couple of pictures, and get out of his way um, because the center of gravity of that bike um, was actually over the lip of the trunk, and it probably ended up falling out on the road. So anyway, that's the little segue. Um, even though this thing is small on the outside, it's surprisingly roomy on the inside. Um, even for a big, tall geek like me, I'm 6'3", and not only do I have plenty of leg room in this car, I've also got a lot of, of headroom. Uh, and that's an important consideration if you're tall. A lot of cars, in particular cars that have the sunroof, this one does, um, you'll find that headroom is kind of lacking and you kind of have to scrunch down or adjust the seat in a way that's not particularly comfortable in order to drive it. Um, not so in the Mini. Um, both the driver and the passenger have plenty of room and, let me get out here and show you. I mean, the back seats are tight, um, but they are definitely viable for short trips and kids. And in the original, they were not, so that's a plus. And uh, believe it or not, you can carry a lot of stuff in a Mini. I've got the seats dropped back here so that you can see that. If you drop these seats back, uh, you've got a pretty expansive cargo area. And um, trust me, I've used these uh, press cars that I get to haul home all kinds of weird stuff. Um, and you can haul a bunch of stuff in a Mini. You'd be uh, surprised that you could haul. Uh, the uh, base car comes with a three-cylinder turbo. It used to come with a four-cylinder. Uh, the, uh, the little 1.5 three-cylinder is actually an improvement uh, over the previous uh, one, both in terms of performance and mileage. Um, this thing can get in the low 40s on the highway if you don't uh, rock it too hard, uh, which is hard to do because it's such a fun little car. Um, I like the way they have deftly incorporated some of the styling cues of the original Mini um, and updated them with modern themes. Some of you might recall the original Mini uh, from back in the 60s, and it had a big speedometer right here. So they've kept the shape, but instead of having a speedometer here, you've got your infotainment screen um, and menus and so on, um, all of which, by the way, are controlled by a mouse input right here. And uh, then they've got the cool old-timey toggle switches, and you've got some more of those here, which I really like. They're, they're very tactile. You know, you can feel that. I like that you can touch that and feel that. Um, as opposed to some of these, these flat screen touch things that you really have to look at and be sure what you're touching when you touch it and then the car is moving and then you find it wind up touching something else. 
Here's the drive mode thing that I was telling you about, this ring that's around the shifter. This car has an automatic, obviously. Um, and if I move it to the left, you can watch the screen now when I do it. Um, it'll put the car into let's motor hard sport mode, and you'll see that the LED ring turned red. And if I go to the right, green, then it goes to minimize. No, mid mode, well, excuse me, that's the third mode. There's green, and there's the green surround. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can upgrade in this thing to a more powerful 2.0-liter turbo, and then if you really want to go whole hog, there's the John Cooper Works version of this car, um, and that's their hot rod shop. It's kind of like M for, for BMW or, or AMG for Mercedes. But truth be told, and this is just subjective, uh, just me, your, your mileage may vary, I really like the standard Mini with the 1.5-liter uh, 3. It's a real nice balance of fun, affordability, and good, good mileage. Um, the 2.0S equipped model is quicker, but the gas mileage isn't as good, and it's considerably more expensive. I'm not slamming it, but um, part of the attraction of this car is that it's priced around the level of an economy car to start, um, right, right around $20,000. So it's a little bit more than what you'd pay to get into something like a pretty well-equipped Corolla, let's say. Um, but it's a whole lot more fun and much more cute than a Corolla. So, anyway, uh, there'll be more up at epautos.com uh, shortly. Um, there's also a, um, a piece about how Uncle killed Volvo. Um, and I should have that ebook that I have been promising everybody finished by next week, Coffee Willing. So, anyway, thanks for viewing, and we'll catch up with you on the flip.